My story. I was born into a rich and important family in Tyrone Island. I was the younger of two daughters and we were the only children. My sister was six years older than me so we didn't play much together when I was young and I was only 12 years old when she got married. I remember the day of her wedding well. Many people came, all of them laughing, singing and happy. But I felt sad when my sister left with her new husband, Mr. Karu. She was always very nice to me, nicer than my mother, and so I cried when she went away to her new home in Dublin. My mother and father didn't love me they wanted sons and were not very interested in me. About a year after my sister got married, a letter arrived from Mr. Karu. He said that my sister was ill and that she wanted to come home to Tyrone and stay with us, to be with her family. I was sad that she was ill but also very happy about her visit. They're leaving Dublin on Sunday, my father told me, and they're arriving here on Tuesday evening. Tuesday came and it was a very long day. Hour after hour came and went and I listened all the time for my sister and her husband. Now the sky was dark and soon it was midnight but I couldn't sleep. I listened and waited. Suddenly, at about 1 o'clock in the morning, I heard a noise far away. I ran out of my bedroom and down to the living room. They're here, they're here. I called to my father and we quickly opened the front door to see better. We waited there for a few minutes and we heard the noise again. Somebody crying far away in the night. But we saw nothing. There were no lights and no people there. We went outside, waiting to say hello and to help my sister with her bags. But nobody was there. Nobody came. I looked at my father and he looked at me. We didn't understand. I know I heard a noise, he said. Yes, I answered. I heard it too, father. But where are they? We went back into the house without another word. We were suddenly afraid. The next day, a man arrived and told us that my sister was dead. On Sunday she felt very ill. On Monday she was worse and on Tuesday at about 1 o'clock in the morning. She died. At the same time that we were outside the house, in the night, waiting for her. I never forgot that night, for the next two years I was very sad. You could say that I stopped living. I didn't want to do anything or speak to anyone. Mr. Carew soon married another young woman in Dublin, and I felt angry that he forgot my sister so quickly. I was now the only child of a rich and important family, so before I was 14 years old, men started to visit our home. They wanted to meet me, and perhaps to marry me. But I didn't like any of these men, and I thought I was too young to be married. When I was 16 my mother took me to Dublin. Dublin is a big city, she said. We're going to meet richer and more interesting men than the ones back home in Tyrone. We can easily find you a good husband in Dublin. In Dublin I began to be happier. I met a lot of friendly people, and I went dancing every evening. A lot of young men came to speak to me and asked me to dance. I liked talking to them. I started to live and laugh again, and I didn't think about my dead sister all the time. But my mother was not so happy. She wanted me to find a husband quickly. One night before I went to bed she came into my room and said, Do you know Lord Glenfallon? Oh yes, I answered. He's that ugly old man from Cahagular. He's not ugly and he's not old, Fanny, my mother said quickly. He's from a very rich and important family too, and he wants to marry you. He loves you, loves me, wants to marry me, but he's making a mistake, mother, I said. I don't love him, I can't marry somebody I don't love. Think about it, Fanny. My mother, answered quietly, he's a good man, and he wants to marry you. You're a very lucky young woman. My mother left the room, and I sat quietly for a long time. Lord Glenfallon was a nice friendly man, I thought. I didn't love him. No, but I did like him. He always talked about interesting things. I never felt happy at home with my mother and the next morning when I saw my mother I said only one word. Yes. Lord Glenfallon and I got married the next spring, and two days after our wedding we said goodbye to my family and left Tyrone. Three days later we arrived in Kahar Hila, and I saw my husband's beautiful house for the first time. It was near a river, and there were many trees and flowers in the garden. Birds sang in the trees and the sky was blue. I stood next to him and looked at it all, and I felt very, very happy. Come, my love, said my husband. 
You must come in and meet Martha. She cooks and cleans and knows everything about the house. So we went into the house and I met Martha, a friendly old woman with smiling blue eyes.